Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this video, we're going to be doing part two of the solid design pattern series. This video is going to be focusing on the O, the open close principle. If you don't know what that means, then obviously I'm going to get into an explanation of that during the video. I'm going to be giving you a code example of, you know, some code that has become messy because they haven't followed this principle and then a way to refactor that and just make your life a lot easier. Uh, obviously, I'm going to be doing the other three videos over the next coming week or so. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let's get to it. But of course, first I got to thank my patrons, so special thanks to Flow State Games, Average Morning, Art Farrell, Buddha Ray, Remy Baldwin, and Phil Baum. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, the link will be down below. If not, then there's also links to my social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help me out by following on those, it would be greatly appreciated. Okay, so I've got a very similar setup to last video. I've just removed the bomb, I've made a new scene. Obviously, if you guys want access to the code, the link's down below to my GitHub page. So what I've basically thought of was, you know, I'm trying to think of a, an example uh, where you might, you know, get into trouble not using this principle. So what I've got here is I've got just the scene like last time with all the same things apart from the bomb. I've still got the enemy script and so on. It doesn't really have any use here. I can remove that. But regardless, um, I have a targeting system. The targeting system just has a script on it. It's just an empty game object in the scene. Now, think of this as in your game, you might have a weapon that has a targeting system or like an ability or an enemy. You know, you're going to be having a targeting system. And those targeting systems are going to have, you know, different types of targeting. Now, the thing is, you um, will likely, if you're doing this well, use scriptable objects. But I haven't gone to the effort of, you know, making a separate scriptable object for every single one, though that can be a good idea. Uh, also, if you're using an add-on like Odin Inspector, you can just serialize the classes in the inspector. Or another option is just to make separate mono behaviors, which is what we're going to be doing. So if you look here, we have the targeting system. And currently, it has an enum, which I've made, called targeting types. Targeting type here. We have non self in radius all. So if we do non, obviously no targets are going to be found. That's the default value. And it debugs a message if you set it to that. So it says, like, hey, you forgot to set the targeting type. Uh, some people prefer just to leave it to use the default enum value, which in my case would be uh, self. The only problem I have with that is, um, you know, I'd rather have some functionality not happen if I didn't set it than the wrong functionality happen from not setting it. But I guess it's a preference thing. Um, so if I set non, it will just debug a message. But if you see here, if I press self and press play, the log, because I'm just logging right now, you would obviously use the actual transform to fire a bullet it or something, but we just say it returns targeting system, because that's the game object uh, that, you know, we found, the self. If we do in radius of five units, we get the cube and the ground. Um, technically in mine, I've just found transforms, and for the physics overlap, you have to find colliders. So technically for that one, we're only going to get back colliders, but in the end, in your game, you're only going to want to actually target things that have colliders on, unless you want specifically to hit a game object that doesn't, it's just a lot harder to find it. But the, the actual logic doesn't really matter for this video, it's the principle behind it. And obviously, yeah, if I set it to um, all and press play, it's going to return every transform in the scene, then you can do stuff with that if you wanted to. Um, so let's get into the code. Also, you see I have a radius field here, which is for the in radius. That, that's kind of one of the problems, right? You'll have this targeting system with an enum handling the logic for each different targeting type. And then for those targeting types, you might have separate variables you need. For example, right, the in radius needs a radius, but the all and the self doesn't. So the script looks like this. On start, we say get targets and go through them all and log them to the console. The main problem is here, though, we have a function that returns a list of transforms or, you know, targets or whatever. And then it has a switch, which is essentially a uh, cleaner version of just doing if else, if else, if else, right? Sometimes you'll have if this, do this, else, do this, else, do this, else, well, else, if, do this. Uh, a switch, if you've never used it before, is just a way to give all the different scenarios of a variable and then do something based on that. So, for example, the targeting type can be self in radius all or none. So I'm saying here, in the case that it's self, do this in the case that it's radius do this it's a bit cleaner but it's still not good because one problem with this the open close principle is that your code should be open for expansion and modification well not yeah expansion like you should be able to expand on it but closed for modification what that means is you should be able to expand a class and add more functionality without modifying the base class essentially by base class i don't mean inheritance wise because th this targeting system isn't going to be inherited but it's going to have stuff um that it does, right? It's going to have different targeting types. Currently, we just store it as an enum, and we say, if this, do this, blah, blah, blah. But let's imagine, right? You're in a scenario where you're like, okay, I've got a new targeting type. I want to target all of a particular layer, right? I want to target all enemy layer or all 
default layer, all this layer, whatever. Well then obviously you'd go to the top and you'd, you'd add a layer mask. And then you'd go down here and you'd say do a overlap sphere like earlier, but we want to add in the parameters a layer mask and so on. And that's that's modifying the code to add more functionality. But the whole point is that goes against the principle. You want to make your code able to add new functionality without you know, modifying it. Now, obviously there will be scenarios where you need to modify old code. It's not saying, all right, once you made a class, never touch it ever again. It's just saying you shouldn't have to come into it and add new scenarios now. Oh, I've added a new targeting type. Okay, let's add it to the enum and then come down here and go, uh, you know, what am I doing? Case targeting type dot the new one, which I haven't made. Do this, blah, 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 break. Blah. You know, I'm, I'm modifying old, co old code and it's just bad because this can become, you know, a huge, massive thing that's really hard to read. And when I find there's a problem with my targeting type for um, a particular type, in here, I'd have to come back to this class and go through it and be like, all right, uh, the in radius one's messing up his logic. Rather than having all the different targeting types be their own classes and just go to the class that's broken and touch that one and it doesn't affect any of the other code. Obviously, it's it's kind of like the single responsibility in the sense that this class shouldn't have the logic for each different type. But the reason why this is a different principle is because the whole point of this is to do with uh, expanding on it without altering it. So I'm going to show you now how to do the same system, the exact same thing, but using more classes to do the different logic. And all this class cares about is that it has a targeting type, which means we're not going to use enums to switch between. We're just going to use a particular class type. So let's get into that now. Okay, so I've just gone and created some classes. So I've made all targeting, in radius targeting, self targeting, I targeting type, which will become an interface. And then I've renamed the targeting system to be targeting system bad. And then I've made targeting system good so that we have, uh, I, so that you guys can look through the bad code and compare it to the good code. If you get the GitHub project, you can obviously compare the two. And then targeting types, I've just kept the old enum. So what we're gonna want to do is go to this interface first. So this will be an interface. Now an interface is a good way to abstract the data. It means that the targeting system, good in this case, doesn't need to know about the implementation of targeting type, just that it can get targets, right? So all it cares about is it's not mono behavior. It has a one function. Anything that is a targeting type has to have one function, not not one function only, but it has to have at least a function that returns a list of transform called get targets, obviously. Or in this case, actually, I'm going to rename. I'm going to call it I target getter. Target getter. I think that makes better sense for the name. So I target getter. Right. So, I mean, I could call this all getter in radius getter. You know, it doesn't matter. The, the naming isn't that important. I mean, it is in general, but for this example, it's not. I'm just going to show you how to do it. So anything that's a target getter returns a list of transform targets. Right. So now without actually writing any of the logic in any of the getters, if we go to the good targeting system, we can then look at the bad one and just basically want to do it the same thing. Right. So on start, we want to do this. We want to say uh, get targets. But the get targets isn't from us, it's from a target getter on us. Um, let's just say on start. Okay, I've really messed this up by how I've started typing it now. Start. Private way start. And we want to do this. There we go. Save the day. With an extra bracket. So currently we say get targets from the old function, but obviously we get targets from the target getter, not here. So we're gonna say we want a target getter. Problem is we can't make it a serialized field because Unity doesn't serialize um, mono behaviors, oh sorry, interfaces. Now, technically there is a way around that, which is by using scriptable objects. So we could go with that idea, but that would take too long. And um, it's essentially the way I'm doing it now, just by making the classes inherit from scriptable objects and creating scriptable object assets for everything. I'm saying for now, we should just basically do serialized fields. Oh no, we should just have private. Um, we want a private I target getter, target getter, all right? What that means is we can actually get it in start by using Unity's get component. Right, so if we say the target getter is equal to uh, get component i target getter, so we're going to find an i target getter on us, and then we're just going to basically say um, if the target getter's null, so if we forget to set it, um, if I can type, then we're going to return. Right, we're just going to return if there's no target getter on us, and then if there is, then we can just say uh, target getter dot get targets because we made that function happen right and then for all the targets debug log right 
that's just a simple imp implementation. But now, right, we've built the targeting system for all we care about, right? It does the same thing as the other one, but it's delegated the logic for getting targets to a target getter, and it doesn't know what it does, right? So if we now code the logic for the target getters, and then we decide one day, you know what, I want a new target getter. I don't have to come back and touch this class. This class is done. Obviously, if it needs to do more things, then we have to code it, but it will never, in like, the these two are separated now, right? The targeting types and the targeting um, system. So if we had like a gun that needed to get a targeting type, it would just say, I need a targeting type, and you just plug in the one you want, right? And then you don't have to edit this code or change an enum or whatever. So the eye targeting thing, we don't have to touch this really, either the target getter, unless we need it to do more stuff, in which case we do, but you know, at the moment we don't. So self-targeting, well, this is the mono behavior, yeah, but it's also an eye target getter which doesn't, it's not happy because we don't yet have a function called get targets that returns a list of transforms, though we do now. What do we want to do? We want to get some targets. So for self-targeting, we just want to return, um, well, we can just say return a new list of transforms where we have our self, so transform. Like so. Uh, if you do syntax like this, it just means you're setting the first value in it to be tr uh, your current transform, right? If you're using scriptable objects, the only difference is you would have to pass through the transform of the, the target system. The reason being is because um, the scriptable objects don't exist in the scene, so they don't know where they are because they, they aren't anywhere in the scene. These are mono behaviors, so they can actually get themselves. Um, and because they're on the same object, for the sake of this demonstration, I'm just going to say pass in our transform. but Strictly speaking, you should pass in the transform of the base targeting system. So I'm, I'm actually just going to say here transform, right? Meaning we're going to pass through the targeting system, which means self will actually have a transform. Um, and we're going to use that instead, right? So what this actually does is it overwrites our transform with the transform we've been passed in. If we wanted to use our transform, we'd use this dot, but we're not. The target getter now needs to say, oh, yeah, guys, you're also being passed through a transform, okay? So this one's happy now. If we give it a second, it's now happy. And just for demonstration purposes, just to show it works, uh, 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 this should be happy too. Uh, actually, no, because I typoed. Now it'll be happy. We're going to go and show this one working. So let's just pretend this is our only targeting type, right? We've got our targeting system good now. And we've got self-target. Oh, see Daisy? We've got self-targeting. We press play. It's going to use self-targeting. We get ourself. So now that's done. But if we want to add more logic, we want to add different targeting types, we just like drop on the new one. So we, we don't touch the targeting system good now. All targeting, well, okay, all targeting is a mono behavior of type I targeting, uh, I target getter, because I am a target getter, right? We implement the interface and then we write the logic. So what's the logic for getting targets for all? We're just going to say um, return um find objects of type transform dot to list and then there you go right you've got your um logic for the all targeting so now let that compile we're like all right targeting system we want to use an all targeting type now press play we haven't touched the targeting system to add new logic to get new target types right and then finally, just to end the video off, uh, we're going to do the in radius. Now, this is where it's useful, right? Because the in radius needs to know the radius. So we'll say radius, like so. We'll set it equal to five by default. And then we want to inherit, we want to not inherit, so we want to implement the interface. So I target getter. To be a target getter, we must do this. And now, how do we get our targets? Well, to save time, I'm just going to go back here and just copy and paste the logic because I've already written it. Um, I don't know what I'm doing there. <laughs> I, apparently, it doesn't want to format properly. Oh, well, I'll just do it manually. Like so. I just did that to basically fit it on the screen. That's the only reason I did that. And then targets, well, we're going to need to say... Um, ch -ch -ch. New... We'll say targets equals a new list of transform targets.add return targets like so 
yeah, I, if I had a bigger zoom or zoomed out more, I could sh I could just put that on one line to make it look neater because it's just a one liner. I'll just zoom out to there. You guys can read that. I'm sure you, I'm sure you can. Okay, well there we go, and that's the uh, in radius targeting type done. The logic's all written there. So I'm like, all right, actually we want we want to just get targets in a radius. And the radius is five we press play and it should return the two objects that are in range ground and cube i hope you guys enjoyed this video if it helped you then feel free to let me know down below how it helped and i hope you look forward to the next few videos in the series where we cover the liskov substitution principle for the l in solid then for the i it's interface segregation principle and then for d dependency inversion principle so i'll be doing a video on each of those different topics just keep in mind some of the topics overlap a tiny bit so if you see me doing something in one of my videos that i've done in another one like this, it won't be the same video, but if you see any overlapping stuff, then that's kind of a good thing in the sense that, um, you know, all these things work together to make good code. It doesn't mean it's the only, they're not the only design principles that exist, right? Um, there's, there's plenty and they all exist for a reason. doesn't mean you should use them all in every single scenario, right? You shouldn't like make your code more complicated for no reason. But, you know, if you see a scenario in your code where you've got switches and tons of ifs like that, you know, if this, do this, and then you add more logic, you have to go back and add more ifs. That's definitely like a situation or a scenario that you should implement this so yeah i hope it helps you guys uh, feel free to join the discord server and you know ask for help or you know show off what you've been doing you know just showcase your work um social media links are all down below in case you want to check me out there you know go get the word out about me if you want to but yeah hope you enjoyed this video i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching and goodbye